Advent blessings, friends of the border town, it's Father Pete. So as we begin this new liturgical season with the first Sunday of Advent in Cycle B, I was trying to figure out a way to offer some kind of spiritual activity for a group of folks who are bound at home because of the ongoing pandemic and a lot of people who would prefer to watch these masses online. What we decided to do this season is uh, offer a lot of spiritual activities both on the parish website and on YouTube and on Facebook. Towards that goal, uh, what I've done is I've taken some of the Christmas and Advent songs that I have written as a personal hobby and I have added some videos and pictures of folks at the parish who have done some wonderful things over the years to kind of give you a feel of the Christmas past of St. Anne's and St. Patrick's with a little bit of original music. The idea is if this is my Christmas gift to you, hopefully you can reciprocate by taking care of your own parish. I am not looking for anything personally. All I want to do is just try to help you get through this difficult time and tell you that the light of Christ has not abandoned us. I will offer some Advent reflections. I will continue to offer these videos. Prior to uh, the Masses I celebrate, I'll offer the songs that I've written with some uh, pictorial tributes. The first song that we're going to offer uh, for this particular season is a song I wrote back in uh, 2005 called Family. And uh, essentially, as mom and dad have taken care of us, God has done the same for the world. God is our Father. We are blessed that He chose to send His Son so that we would have a chance for salvation. May the light of this Advent and Christmas season shine upon you. And thank you very much for your support, your prayers, and your patience during this time. a family together a brother who prays with a heart overflowed that man means to me means to me a symbol a voice in the Lord a sister that sings with brother together a woman that sings in a love They sing Amen, Alleluia, sing Amen, Alleluia, they sing as a duo, a harmony, that is what family means to me, they sing Sing Amen, Alleluia, sing Amen, Alleluia, they sing as a Christian community, that is what family means to me, they sing Sing as a Christian for me. 
celebration You turn to the people you love And in them you see a grace within yourself Grace from our God Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. As I told you, uh, the songs that I have written are not necessarily Advent-related, but it's my way of gifting all of you and telling you that I want to give of myself during this time. I do not want you to think that this light of Advent has been extinguished just because of the ways of the world. Unfortunately, we chose to live in this world, and these are the consequences. But we also learn that if we have faith in God, what happens on the other side of life is a time of peace and an eternal gaze to the one who created us and the one who wants to bring us home. As we gather to begin this new liturgical season in this first Sunday of Advent, let us open our hearts to God's presence as we call to mind our sins. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and all to one, have mercy upon us. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Santo Dios, Santo Poderoso, Santo Immortal, ten piedad de nosotros. Christe eleison, Christe eleison. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and all to one, have mercy upon us. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all of our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, 
O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered at his right hand they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. You, Lord, are our Father, our Redeemer, you are named forever. Why do you let us wander, O Lord, from your ways, and harden our hearts, so that we fear you not? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your heritage. O oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down with the mountains quaking before you. While you wrought awesome deeds we could not hope for, such as they had not heard of from old. No ear has ever heard, no eye ever seen any God but you, doing such deeds for those who wait for him. Would that you might meet us doing right, that we were mindful of you in our ways. Behold, you are angry, and we are sinful. All of us has become like unclean people. All our good deeds are like polluted rags. We have all withered like leaves, and our guilt carries us away like the wind. There is none who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to cling to you. For you have hidden your face from us, and have delivered us up to our guilt. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you the potter. We are all the work of your hands. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. O shepherd of Israel, hearken from your throne upon the cherubim, shine forth, rouse your power, and come to save us. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. Once again, O Lord of hosts, look down from heaven and see. Take care of this vine and protect what your right hand has planted, the Son of Man, whom you yourself made strong. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face and we shall be saved. May your help be with the man of your right hand, with the Son of Man whom you yourself made strong. Then we will no more withdraw from you. Give us new life, and we will call upon your name. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always on your account for the grace of God bestowed on you in Jesus Christ, that in him you were enriched in every way with all discourse and all knowledge. As the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ, he will keep you firm to the end, irreproachable on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, and by him you were called to fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. 
Jesus said to his disciples, Be watchful, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It is like a man traveling abroad. He leaves home and places his servants in charge, each with his own work, and orders the gatekeeper to be on the watch. Watch, therefore, you do not know when the Lord of the house is coming, whether at evening, or at midnight, or at cock crow, or in the morning. May he not come suddenly and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all. Watch. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I wrote this Advent poem a few years ago in the thrust of Advent and Christmas consumerism that seems very trivial in the wake of what we are enduring right now. He could not find his Christ in December. He could not find the Christ child at all. A rumored consumer, he lost all his bearing. He lost Christmas meaning, a mere falderall. When he met Cyber Monday, he looked for the deals that would give Giving Tuesday a purpose in life, a coat to the needy, a small food donation, the faith kept on calling, but he lost inspiration. He sought White Out Wednesday for last-minute bargains. He ran to Gray Thursday after Thanksgiving dinner. By the time that Black Friday had emptied his wallet, the notion of prayer had been lost on the sinner. And just before Christmas was thrust Super Saturday, the consumer then knew that it just did not matter day. His fortunes had changed at the stir of his heart, so he skipped football Sunday, and for Christ did his part. She could not find her Christ in December. She could not find the Christ child at all. Lost a possession, adrift from her bearing, to find meaning at Christmas, a mere falderall. She passed Cyber Monday. She couldn't care less. When she met Giving Tuesday, she had nothing to give. She sought direction in grim deprivation. She thought faith abandoned her in desperation. For her, Whiteout Wednesday was all about snow. The life of Gray Thursday formed puddles below. The meaning to the season dissolved in Black Friday, so she started to pray, and her faith led the way. Just before Christmas, she met Super Saturday. She went to a shelter to get back on her way. A small food donation and a warm coat for wearing in a kind disposition, abundantly sharing. Behind, he had left the days of consumption and gave back to Christmas his heart over function. She found hope in his act, a gesture applaud, for they saw in each other the presence of God. I remember as a child in July and August we would get the Swiss Colony catalog that would give us these wonderful Christmas deals four months down the line. Nowadays the Hallmark Channel plays those Christmas movies in July and August, Christmas in the summer they call it. And we have radio stations have now playing their Christmas music starting in the beginning of November, so that by the time we actually get to December 25th, we're pretty much tired of the season. We want to move on instead of focusing on that light of Christ that penetrates the darkness and is with us for the rest of our existence, that light of baptism that never goes away because Emmanuel is with us. God, the new Messiah, has come to earth to take us to the new Jerusalem, not the one in Israel, but the one in heaven. Nevertheless, our consumerist world likes to focus on Black Friday and Cyber Monday and Gray Thursday and all those catchy little phrases to get you to go out and spend, spend, spend. And then we think that the world is full of gravitas, and if we don't spend enough money and do enough things and give enough things away to people that are going to end up in a landfill in Boise, Idaho in the next two weeks, then we think that our lives are lost. To give from our hearts a kind word, a kind action, to spend time at the dinner table. The pandemic has done a lot of bad things, but the one thing it can do that provides good is spending time with the ones we love, the ones to whom we are committed to tell them that we love them and we want to be with them. And they are so important to us. As Christ would say, I am with you always until the end of the age. We need to carry that same sentiment and practice that in Advent so that at Christmas time that prophecy can be fulfilled. By the time we reach Christmas and open those presents in the commercial world so desperate to sell, 
we end up losing our focus of what this season is about. But if we begin to prepare right now, realizing that Christmas is four weeks away, and that gives us time to remind ourselves why we are here on earth, why Christ came down on earth, because we were not capable of following God's plan, that Christ had to do it for us, that he had to assume a human nature, that he assumed a human will. That is our first reading today from what is called uh, Second, Third Isaiah. The reason we celebrate Advent is it gives us four weeks to remind us of what our true purpose is in life, to prepare correctly for the coming of this light. We realize, as told to us in Isaiah, that we were in darkness. We did not follow God's way and that we needed a Messiah to draw us to where we need to go. We prepare ourselves by living the kind of life that Christ wants us to live so that when we commemorate the time of his coming on December 25th, we are acting like Christ so that we truly can be with Christ so that after the 25th, we're not packing Jesus away into a box, but rather we're embracing him in our hearts and allowing that light to shine. It takes time. It takes preparation to study, to pray, to serve, to love, to do all those kind of things that are necessary to uh, build a relationship with God, which we should have been doing from the moment of our baptism. I was thinking that uh, in the season of Advent, the one gift we have been given, especially during this pandemic, is kind of reflected on two riddles that I found, a throwaway philosopher's riddle and one that talks about building a relationship with God. From the commercial standpoint, the riddle goes like this. This thing all things devour, birds, beasts, trees, and flowers. It gnaws iron, bites steel, grinds hard stones to meal, slays kings, ruins towns, and beats all the mountains down. From a spiritual standpoint, what is more precious than gold, but cannot be bought, earned, or fit to hold? And the answer is time. We have been given this time, four weeks, to understand why God created us, why God came down in the world to save us. Today, the focus is what's called the two comings of Christ. Christ at Christmas, Christ at the last day on Judgment Day, to determine how we have lived our lives. Have our lives been dedicated? Has our time been dedicated, our talents, our treasures, to taking care of those who are poor, those who are needy, those who uh, ask for God's help? That's why we do angel trees and giving trees. That's why we make the sunshine phone calls. That's why we make mats for the homeless out of uh, plastic grocery bags. All these things that we do are for the sake of the other, which is the whole reason Christ came down on earth. And so we gather together today. We realize that in this time we have been given the wonderful ability to spend it with God and our families and to realize what truly is precious in this world. Not gold, not silver, but each other and with God. Let's make it a good time. Let's dedicate ourselves to loving our God and loving our neighbor. And let us realize that the commercialism has its place. Give to Caesar what is Caesar's, but let's make sure we give to God what is God. Starting on this day, where we light the candle of this Advent wreath and remind ourselves that in the world, the world will come to an end, but that light will continue to shine. Let's allow it to shine brightly on the people that we meet. This is our prayer. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. 
he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Today, as we enter the season of Advent, we begin a new year in our church, a time when we prepare for the coming of Christ. Therefore, in a spirit of new beginnings, let us now pray that we may always be ready to welcome our Lord into the world. That the keeping of Advent may open our hearts to God's love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the light of Christ may penetrate the darkness of sin, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that this wreath may constantly remind us to prepare for the coming of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Christmas season may fill us with peace and joy as we strive to follow the example of Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are sick, that they find God's love in the hands of their caregivers. Especially today, we remember those on our parish's sick list. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have died may find the promise of eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the intentions offered during this last week, that they and their families be embraced by God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, your church joyfully awaits the coming of its Savior who enlightens our hearts and dispels the darkness of ignorance and sin. Pour forth your blessings upon us as we light the candles of this wreath. May their light reflect the splendor of Christ who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. And now, through the power of battery-operated candles, I light one candle on this Advent wreath. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands it will become for us the bread of life, blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever, with humble spirit and contrite heart. May we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord of my iniquity, wash me and cleanse me of my sin. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice in yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make gathered from among your gifts to us, and may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. 
for he assumed at his first coming the loneliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and while the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and you make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed... He himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body and one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Patrick, St. Anne, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Ronald our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you, at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. 
Amen, 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 Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of our Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of that peace. On you stay, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On you stay, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On you stay, Qui tolis peccata mundi, dona nobis pacem. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray, for even now as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So even though we're going to be pulling back on a lot of our Advent activities because many people would prefer to stay home, there is one thing we are not going to stop, and that's the Our Lady of Guadalupe celebration on December 12th. I have found a mariachi band, uh, Mariachis de Estrellas de Chicago, uh, a group that is going to come on December 12th to play at our liturgy and then are going to have a concert following the Mass. We're going to pass out flowers to the moms. We're going to do whatever. This may be our Christmas celebration for the border town parishes. Regardless, no matter what happens, I will be at all the churches at all the Mass times distributing communion. And if we are allowed to, we are going to celebrate those Masses. 4 o'clock at St. Patrick's on Saturday, 9 o'clock on Sundays at St. Anne's, 10.30 in English at St. Pat's, and 12 o'clock noon in Spanish. If there's anything you need, if you need a sunshine phone call, if you need an anointing, if you need communion, if you just need a pastoral visit, please contact our offices. This is my vocation. This is what I'm called to do. This is why I've been asked to come out to the border towns. You are not alone. We are with you, and certainly the light of God is in your hearts 
that light of baptism that will never go away. Never forget that. And please know, online, we will have the Advent reflections and the songs that I've written with a pictorial tribute from our parishioners in the parishes, and we will do whatever we can to help you out. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass has ended. Now go in peace. Thanks be to God.